we have to ask uh, what happens here. This, uh, this series for H of U doesn't seem to stop. You go A0, A2, A4, well, it could go on forever. And what would happen if it goes on forever? So if it goes on forever, let's calculate what is aj plus 2 over aj as j goes to infinity. Let's see how the coefficients vary as you go higher and higher up in the polynomial. That should be an interesting thing. So I pass the aj that is on the right hand side and divide it. And now on the right hand side is just this uh, product of factors. And as j goes to infinity, it's much larger than 1 or e, whatever it is, and uh, the 2 and the 1 in the denominator. So this goes like 2j over j squared. And this goes roughly like 2 over j. So as you go higher and higher up, if you're by the time j is a billion, the next term is 2 divided by a billion. And it, they are decaying, which is good, but uh, they're not decaying fast enough. That's a problem. So let's try to figure out if we know of a function that um, decays in a similar way. So let's, you could do it some other way, I'll do it this way. e to the u squared, let's look at this function, is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity, 1 over n, uh, u squared to the n, so it's u to the 2n, 1 over n factorial. So now, um, since we have j's and they jump by 2's, this exponents also here is jump by 2. So that's about right. So let's think of 2n being j. And therefore, this becomes a sum over j equals 0, 2, 4, and all that <coughs> of 1 over, so even j's. Uh, 2n is equal to j, so j over 2 factorial over 1, and then you have u to the j. So if I think of this as some coefficient c sub j times u to the j, We've learned that c sub j is equal to 1 over j divided by 2 factorial. In which case, if that is true, let's try to see what is cj plus 2 over cj, the ratio of two consecutive coefficients in this series. Well, cj plus 2 would be j plus 2 over 2 factorial, like this. That's the numerator, because of that formula. And the denominator would have just j over 2 factorial. Now, factorial, these factorials make sense. You don't have to worry that there are factorials of halves, because j is even. And therefore, the numerators are even divided by 2. These are integers. These are ordinary factorial. There are factorials of fractional numbers. You've seen them probably in statistical physics in other fields. Uh, but we don't have those here. Uh, this is another thing. So this cancel, you have a number, and the number plus 1, which is here, <coughs> you get j plus 2 over 2, which is 2 over j plus 2. And that's, when j is large, it's just 2 over j. 
which is exactly what we have here. So this supposedly nice innocent uh, function polynomial here, if it doesn't truncate, if this recursion relation keeps producing you more and more and more and more terms forever, will diverge. And it will diverge like, so if the series does not truncate, h of u will diverge like e to the u squared. Needless to say, that's a disaster, because first, it's kind of interesting to see back here, yes, you have a safety factor, e to the minus u squared over 2, but if h of u diverges like e to the u squared, you're still in trouble. e to the u squared minus u squared over 2 is e to the plus u squared over 2. And it actually coincides with what we learned before, that any solution goes like either plus or minus u squared over 2. So if h of u doesn't truncate and doesn't become a polynomial, it will diverge like e to the u squared, and this solution will diverge like e to the plus u squared over 2, which was a possibility. And it will not be normalizable. So that's uh, basically the gist of the argument. This differential equation, whenever you work with arbitrary energies, there's no reason why the series will stop. Because E there would have to be equal to 2j plus 1, which is an integer. So unless j e is an integer, it will not stop. And then you'll have a divergent, well, not divergent, unbounded far phi of u that is impossible to normalize. So the requirement that the solution be normalizable quantizes the energy. It's a very nice effect of a differential equation. It's very nice that you can see it without doing numerical experiments that what's going on here is an absolute requirement that this series terminates. Um, so here, phi of u would go like e to the u squared over 2, what we mentioned there, and uh, it's not a solution. So if the series must terminate, the numerator of that box equation must be zero for some value of j. And therefore, there must exist a j such that 2j plus 1 is equal to the energy. So, basically what this means is that this unit-free energies must be an odd integer. So in this case, this can be true for j equals 0, 1, 2, 3. In each case, it will terminate the series. With j equals 0, <coughs> 1, 2, or 3, there you get some values of e that the series will terminate. And when this series terminates, a j plus 2 is equal to 0. Because look at your box equation. A j, you got some number, and then suddenly you get this 2 j plus 1 minus e, and if that's 0, the next one is 0. So, yes, you get something interesting even for j equals 0, because in that case, you can have a0, but you will have no a2, just a constant. So I will write it, uh, so if aj plus 2 is equal to 0, h of u 
will be a j u to the j plus a j minus 2 u to the j minus 2. And it goes down. The last coefficient that exists is a j. And then you go down by 2s. So let's use the typical notation. We call j equal n. n. And then the energy is 2n plus 1. The h is a n u to the n plus a n minus 2 u to the n minus 2. And it goes on. If n is even, it's an even solution. If n is odd, it's an odd solution. And the energy e, remember, was h omega over 2 times e, so 2n plus 1. So we'll write it, we'll move the 2 in, and e will be equal to h omega n plus 1 half. And n in all these solutions go from 0, 1, 2, 3, we can call this the energy En. So here you see another well-known, famous fact. The energy levels are all evenly spaced. H omega over 2, 1 by 1 by 1 by 1. Except that there's even an offset for n equals 0, which is supposed to be the lowest energy state of the oscillator, you still have a 1 half h bar omega. This is just saying that if you have the potential, the ground state is already a little bit up. You would expect that. You, don't, you know there's no solutions with energy below the lowest point of the potential. But the first solution has to be a little bit up, so it's here, and then they're all evenly spaced. And uh, this begins with E0 for n equals 0, E1, and there's a little bit of notational issues. We used to call the ground state energy sometimes E1, E2, E3 going up, but this time it's very natural to call it E0 because it corresponds to n equals 0. But um, so <laughs> those things happen. No, no, it's not an approximation. Um, um, it's really, in a sense, the following uh, statement. Let me remind everybody of that statement. When you have even or odd solutions, you can produce a solution that you may say it's a superposition, but it will not be an energy eigenstate anymore. Because the even solution that stops, say, at u to the 6 has some energy, and the odd solution has a different energy. So these are different energy eigenstates. So the energy eigenstates, like we prove for one-dimensional potentials, are not chosen to be even or odd for bound states. They are either even or odd. You see, a superposition. Any, how do we say it like that? Here, here we have it. If this coefficient is even, the energy is some value. If this coefficient is odd, the energy will be different. And two energy eigenstates with different energies, the sum is not an energy eigenstate. You can construct a general solution by superposing things, but that will be general solutions of the full time-dependent Schrodinger equation, not of the energy eigenstates. The equation we're aiming to solve there is a solution for energy eigenstates. And the, although this concept I can see now from the questions where you're getting, it's, it's a subtle statement 
our statement was from quantum mechanics that when we would solve for a symmetric potential, the bound states would turn out to be either even or odd. It's not an approximation, it's not a choice, it's something forcing you. Each time you find the bound state is either even or is odd, and this turned out to be this case. You would have said the general solution is a superposition, but that's not true, because if you put a superposition, the energy will truncate one of them, but will not truncate the other series. So uh, one will be bad, it will do nothing. So uh, if this point is not completely clear, please insist later, insist in recitation, come back to me, office hours. This point should be eventually clear. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> it's good. Uh, so, what are the names of these things? Uh, these are called Hermit polynomials. And uh, so, back uh, to the differential equation. Let's, let's look back at the differential equation when E is equal to 2m plus 1 <coughs> plus 1. Go back to the differential equation and we'll write d second du squared hn of u that will be called the Hermit polynomial n minus 2u dhn du plus e minus 1 but e is 2n plus 1 minus 1 is 2n hn of u is equal to zero. This is the differ Hermit's differential equation. And the HNs are Hermit polynomials, which conventionally, for purposes of doing your algebra nicely, people have figured out that HN of U is convenient if the, it begins with u to the n and then it continues down u to the n minus 2 and all these ones here. But here people like it when it's 2 to the n, u to the n. A normalization. Uh, so the leading term, we know the leading term must be u to the n. Like uh, if you truncate with j, you got u to the j. You truncate with n, you get u to the n. Uh, since this is a linear differential equation, the coefficient in front is your choice. And uh, people's choice has been that one and has been followed. A few Hermit polynomials, just a list. h0 is just one. h1 is 2u h2 is 4u squared minus 2, h3 is our last one, 8u cubed minus 12u, I think. Uh, I have a little typo here, maybe it's wrong. Um, so you want to generate more Hermit polynomials, here's a neat uh, way that uh, is used sometimes. And uh, and it's through a generating functional. It's very nice actually. You, know, you will have in some homework a little discussion. Look, you put a variable z over there. What is z having to do with anything? Uh, u we know, but z, why? Well, z is that formal variable for what is called the generating function. So it's equal to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity. And you expand kind of like an exponential, zn over n factorial. But there will be functions of u all over there. 
when you collect, if you expand this exponential, you will have an infinite series, and then you have to collect terms by powers of z. And if you have a z to the 8, you might have gotten from this to the 4th, but you might have gotten it from this to the th 3, and then um, two factors of this term squared, or a cross product. So after all, here there will be some function of u, and that function is called the Hermit polynomial. So if you expand this with Mathematica, say, and say collect in terms of u, you will generate the Hermit polynomial. Um, with this formula, it's kind of not that difficult to see that um, the Hermit polynomial begins in this way. And how do you check this is true? Well, you would have to show that such polynomials satisfy that differential equation. And that's easier than what it seems. Uh, it might seem difficult, but it, just a few lines. Now, I want you to feel comfortable enough with this, so let me wrap it up, uh, the solutions, uh, and remind you, well, you had all this u, but you cared about x. So uh, u was uh, x over a. So let's look at our wave functions. Our wave functions, phi n of x, will be the Hermit polynomial n of u, which is of x over a, times e to the minus u squared over 2, so which is minus x squared over 2a squared. And you should remember that a squared is h bar over m omega. So all kinds of funny factors. Uh, in particular, this exponential is uh, e to the minus x squared m omega over h squared over 2. I think so. m omega over 2h bar. Let me write it down. And m omega over 2h bar x squared. That's that exponential, and those are the coefficients. And here there should be a normalization constant, which I will not write, it's a little messy. And uh, those are the solutions. And the energies, En, where h bar omega over 2 n plus a half, so E0 is equal to h bar omega over 2, E1 is 3 halves of h bar omega, and it just goes on like that. <laughs>